Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be tearing down my two 24 volt lithium iron phosphate DIY battery build boxes. Now I built these batteries probably almost two years ago now. They ran fantastic over the summer, no issues. I'm gonna be upgrading to a 48 volt pack. I have a company sending me an enclosure that's gonna house these 230 amp hour cells. So I'm gonna to need to tear these down and maybe patch up my boxes and use them for tools. This is a great idea for some of you DIYers out there who want to create your own enclosure. I've made two of them here and I'm going to go through how I built them on the way down. So first things first, this battery is my pride and joy. I spent a lot of time creating this one here, put a lot of effort into it. This top one here, not so much. I just kind of slapped it together in order to start producing more power. But let's take a look at this one here first and then I'll show you guys this one here. So as you can see, I have all my cells in here and really the only way that these cells are held into place is I just use some uh, floor padding. I had extra pieces of squares like you see for kids rooms or gym area and I just cut them up and kind of shoved them in between the cells in the case in order to hold them in place. So let's start out with getting to the balance cables. There we go. I have the balance cables disconnected. So right here I have a Dali BMS and this is the one that has the fan and the fan is blowing out. And I just put a fan cover on the front in the exact area where the fan is just so if this fan ever turns on to dissipate heat, it's gonna blow directly out of the box and take the heat from in the box on either side and then force the air out so it never happened, I never had that scenario, but just in case I was, I designed my box in order to handle that. So that's enough talking, let's uh, get these cells out of here and put them aside. This is kind of one of those things where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But um, I want to use these cells in another project. This battery box did very well. Now. One thing I should mention, because I had slapped this box together, I did not change the cables that are attached to the Dali BMS like I did on the other one. So the other box had a lot less resistance than this box here up to the battery terminals. So what would happen basically is even though they're the same 230 amp hour 24 volt boxes, this one here would always lag behind the other one. The other one would always discharge first and charge first they would always meet up either on the bottom end or the top end, they would always meet up together. But this box had more resistance, so it would always trail behind. So it's not always just the amp hour capacity that you have to worry about when paralleling batteries. You also need to worry about the resistance between different batteries. Yeah, I also had a temperature sensor and my uh, Bluetooth dongle in there as well. How's my camera looking? Let's back you up a little bit. There you go. I had all the cells taped together. I think what I had done, if I can remember correctly, I first taped a bank of four together, and then a bank of four, and then just went around the whole entire thing afterwards. And you can see in this box here, there's the Dali BMS, and the positive wire came over to the Sanderson connector, and the negative went to the battery, and then out and into the other end of this Anderson connector here on the front. So it served its purpose. I'll finish taking that apart later. I wanna get all of my cells out. Um, now something I had done before I removed these cells and disconnected them from the BMS, I charged both packs up to full. This is just gonna make my top balancing easier. Yep, that's right where I have it connected. Okay, I think, yep. Okay, there's one 12 volt pack and there's another 12 volt pack. And there you go. 230 amp hour cells. Okay, I'm gonna get this other pack apart and then we'll start to dismantle this one here. Now this pack here. This one I'm gonna be the saddest taking this apart because this was really nice. 
So I had a main disconnect here and I also had a pre-charge resistor built into the battery. So when I push and hold this button, it's pre-charging the capacitors on whatever I'm hooking up. So I would just push this button for 30 seconds and then turn the battery on. And this switch was letting the positive run through. And on the side, this was where my Anderson connector plug-in was to uh, plug in my battery cables. So this battery here was uh, a lot of thought went into this one. So as you can see, we'll start here with the main disconnect. So I have the post there to there. So let me get some light. There, that's better. You can see now. So yeah, I had the positives on there. And then inside here was my pre-charge resistor. You can sort of see it underneath the switch there. You can see the white. And then that was the switch to run it. And I even had that fused. So if anything went wrong with the pre-charge resistor, it would conk out. And then I had a 150 amp fuse here. And I even had tension bars, threaded rods, that were mounted on the outside of the box. And then it was mounted onto these two pieces of aluminum. And then that's just cutting board that I spray painted black in order to compress these cells. Now there's a lot of discussion out there whether you need to compress them or not. I don't really feel you need to, but uh, I just thought it'd be great to have it inside um, and compress so it would hold the cells in place, not allow them to shift around. And I even went as far as replacing these two cables here that went into the BMS. So I actually cut my own lug and sandwiched them in there into the BMS just so it was more custom and it can hold, it could do a bigger discharge. And this was a 150 amp DALI BMS as well with Bluetooth. I mean, all of my cables are nicely routed. This is this was a nice battery, 24 volt, but it's time to go. So I think the hardest part about dismantling this is trying to remember how I got it all in together. I think what I'm gonna do is just shift it over Ah, as someone once said, this looks like a fish spine. I should be able to just pull these all out. They have been in here together for a long time. Okay. So you can see there, this used to have like a cradle and then I even put some um, tubing over top of the threading in case the, cells, in case the cells shifted and bumped into the rods. They wouldn't, um, over time, create a hole. So I'll dismantle the rest of this later. Now look at this. Look at all these beautiful cells. Because these cells are a little bit different. If you actually look at the, the vent covers, they're two different colors, as well as the terminals on top here are different. These ones here have that small area, and this has got a nice big meaty, meaty uh, piece of aluminum there to attach to. Um, I actually find that these cells were better than these ones. I had gotten two batches. I ordered one batch and got these, and then I wanted to build a second battery. I had asked for the same as these, but I ended up getting these ones. They're the same 230 amp hour. The internal resistance is 0.25 milliohms and 0.25 milliohms. So they're basically the same cells, just different terminal posts, different vent covers. One thing I've never done with these is check them with my QR reading app. Let's see if I can get a reading off of them. Okay, these are, let's take a screenshot. These are EVE cells, and they were manufactured in 2020. So I've had these for a little while. Let's check the other one. And again, EVE power and 2021. So these are the two different type of cells. They're both EVE cells manufactured about a year apart. So next what I wanna do 
is I'm going to want to top balance these cells. So I'm going to connect all my positives and all my negatives all together. So now all my positives are connected and all my negatives are connected. So this is going to be the end of this video. It's just a quick video. I wanted to show you my 224 volt packs and how hard it was to dismantle them because I put a lot of work into them. But I think the case that these cells are going to go into is going to be fantastic and I think you guys are going to really like it. So stay tuned for that. I just wanted to give you kind of a step that I'm doing in order to prepare to have a 48 volt battery build. So this is 16 cells all in parallel and getting top balanced. Um, and uh, next step I will make a video on. So thanks for watching this one, bye.